Chapter 43, Tales of E.T. Awakening Coming to Remember, Indiana When I was four years old, my father asked me what was the first thing I remembered. I told him I remembered being born. When he had he explained, his chin hit the floor, although at the time I didn't understand why. I thought everyone had this memory. It is as ingrained in me as my own fingerprints. It is always clear, solid, and never changing. It's so imprinted on me that my entire life is based on it. My pre-birth memory begins in space. I was a part of everything, and everything was a part of me. There was no sound, not even deafening silence. It was the most peaceful, simplistic, all-knowing feeling. I really can't think of any words to describe it. I could see all around me, from a center point, if you will, except for directly above where there was a gray-silver cloud, as I called it as a child. Below me was this beautiful blue planet, brilliant against the inky blackness of space. Then I began to come together. It was as if trillions of tiny bubbles from the far reaches of space were emerging toward my center being, as if a portion of every planet, every star, every tangible piece of space represented an individual cell in my body. They grew closer and closer until my body was formed, and I was floating on my back, looking up into this silver cloud with the planet below and to my left. I remember floating there, pressing my arms against my thighs, uncomfortable with the fact that I could no longer see all around me. I remember telling myself it was all right, this was simply another form of being. Then I began to float down toward the planet. I did not feel overjoyed, however. It felt more like this was my duty, or I chose to do this. Because of this memory, I firmly believe we're all connected and all a part of God. I've never feared death because of this memory. My next memory was when I first heard my guardian angel. He always speaks to me in my right ear and loud enough to startle me and cause me to turn and look for the voice. When I was two, he warned me that if I didn't put my puppy down, I was going to fall down the stairs. I can still vividly remember turning and looking for that voice. I didn't listen, though, and ended up at the bottom of the stairs. Throughout my life, this voice has warned me of impending danger, of which I've learned to pay attention or suffer the consequences. From that time forward, I've always been aware that there were others watching me. I put my little elementary school friends in a tizzy, sitting out on a neighbor's hill on a starlit night, telling them about life on other planets. I would also greatly upset my grandparents when I insisted that the Bible didn't mean anything to me. I simply knew it wasn't the whole truth. About nine years ago, I began becoming aware of things happening in the world and that something very major was coming. But what has shaken me most happened about six years ago while I was at the shop. It was a quiet afternoon, and I was in my office slumped over my desk when suddenly a tiny white beam of light from somewhere out in space extended toward me and entered the very top of my head and shot me straight up in my chair. In that instant, I was back in space just after coming together under the silver cloud, but this time I heard my own voice from within say, take a closer look. My eyes zoomed in on this silver thing above me only to discover that it wasn't a cloud at all. It was silver looking all right, but it was metal, was vibrating, and it was round. It was quite clearly a ship. It was in that instant that I also remembered so many of the painful memories I swallowed and that the intelligence on the other side of that beam was sorry, but I had run out of time. Suddenly, this wonderful memory I had always deemed a private gift from God had a whole new meaning. I immediately put all the events together and found myself feeling even more alone, and I really had not thought that possible. I've always felt that I had some mission in life, but this put things in a totally different light. Some of the people interviewed in From Elsewhere seem to be able to stay somewhat disconnected from others. Honestly, I see no difference between me, my cat, the cricket on the front porch, or the tree in my backyard. I feel connected so much to everything that I can't read the paper or watch the news anymore. I could quite literally spend 24 hours a day crying and worrying over people I'll never know, and yet I don't seem to be able to callous myself from those feelings. It's almost how the world goes is how I go. But at the same time, I can become so unbelievably angry with people how is it possible to love something and despise it so much at the same time? Moments of Higher Awareness, California 
ages three to five, heard voices of beings that were in various shapes, and who spoke to me or conversed with each other in simple languages. I recall being able to understand most of what was said, but generally being unable to reply. These experiences were mostly in the form of dreams, but occasionally occurred while alone and awake. Age six, sighted a large orange face or head at my bedroom window during dawn. It was not in clear focus and felt evil, causing the feeling of terror and quickly disappeared. The most vivid dream of my life occurred in which 10 to 12 mature forms, all human or human equivalent, stood around the bed in which I slept alone, chanting and turning the bed in slow revolutions. They were not unfriendly or evil. However, as I became more aware of their presence, they seemed to take on the appearance of familiar monsters, Frankenstein, Wolfman, the Mummy, or Dracula. I froze underneath the sheets in terror, then forced myself to look. I saw nothing except darkness and leaped out of bed toward the light switch. Continuing into the hall, I turned on every light in the house, frantic and sobbing. My mother arose and told me I was behaving ridiculously, that it was a nightmare. I hid underneath the bed the rest of that night, unable to sleep. Age eight. Fascination with space travel, wanted to be an astronaut, studied basic astronomy, read about UFOs. My interest waned due to slow technological advances. Age 11. At night, I had dreams of traveling out of my body, sometimes every night, sometimes only once a week. There were dreams in which my senses were most acute, floating out of the house at night on Lake Avenue in Pasadena, California. I would look down on the all-night drive through dairy store next door, then travel in a face-down position along telephone wires. I could see cars traveling on the streets, people walking and talking, and lights of the city in the distance. I would travel by willing my body in any direction. However, it usually took a path along the power lines and transmission wires. I rose to great heights over the city several times, but when the ground details began to lose their distinctness, I would become fearful and fall, ending in a sudden jolt in bed. This would cause me to wake up. Other times I would simply awaken in the morning and recall the entire incident as a vivid dream. This went on for about six months. Ages 14 to 16. I desired to know more than I could learn from school and the world around me. I studied my mother's books on astrology and reincarnation. I took a class called Comparative Religions in high school. I located books in the public and college libraries that contained occult material and asked questions of anyone I was acquainted with whom I considered intelligent. I attended Christian church at the suggestion of my best friend's parents and studied Bible scripture with enthusiasm. I read dozens of books on out-of-body journeys, tarot, mysticism, reincarnation, psychic phenomena, parapsychology. Age 15. I experienced my only conscious out-of-body journey while meditating in a sitting position on a bed during the day. I arose and floated upward, head first through the ceiling. When my head cleared the top of the roof, I was startled by the intensity and clarity of the sun, trees, birds, and motion of cars and people in the neighborhood. This caused anxiety, and I fell back into the room and became aware of my body with a sudden jerk. I was still sitting and retained this memory as a clear and vivid experience that was sharply focused and unlike any dream other than those that occurred during my eleventh year. Age 16. I was meditating and had developed the ability to enter the third or empty space at will. I was energizing my mind and body with light visualization techniques and mantras. I became aware of three transparent heads in my concentration point and that there were concentrated sources of white light within their heads corresponding to the glandular organs of the brain, neck, the pineal, hypothalamus, and thymus glands. I heard the words, to become square, square yourself, in a resonant monotone, more clearly than I have ever heard words that were spoken. This was the only experience I considered to be psychic clairaudience and clairvoyance since my experiences at age 3 to 5. Ages 17 to 37. This 20 year period transpired with no memorable experiences of higher awareness and no attempts to achieve them. I believe this resulted from a conscious decision at age 16 to pursue worldly success at all costs 
and succeed or die trying became my personal goal. I nearly accomplished both. From the past to the present, Norway. Am I a wanderer or star person? I'm not sure, but I definitely know I came from another planet and dimension to incarnate on Earth with a purpose. Searching my own past lives, I find I have been on Earth since after Atlantis was destroyed, about 12,000 years ago. During this time incarnating on Earth, I feel that I have been twice back to my own people to live. I was on Earth when Atlantis flourished, but not as a human. I came to Earth with my own race eons ago, and I think my race came from the Vega, Lyran system. We settled where South America is now, and we lived separate from the humans. We were a timid race, with high spiritual knowledge and technically advanced. We had contact with humans, trying to help without interfering. We saw what was about to happen with Atlantis, and left Earth with great sorrow. Some of us remained, including me, trying to talk to kings and rulers of Atlantis. We also helped evacuate those humans who were chosen to survive, and help them save their knowledge for future civilizations. Most of those we helped ended up in Egypt. I have seen that I was in Atlantis, in a town, with four of my friends waiting for them outside our ship, when a huge earthquake hit, opening the ground in front of me. The ship and myself went into the crack, and I was killed, and maybe that's why I've had fear of natural catastrophes in this life. Leaving my body, I went to Alpha Centauri, where my race had settled. I was born again as a girl, but feel I left my body early. I then went back to Earth to incarnate and had all the intentions to help evolve this third dimensional planet. At that time, my race resided in the fourth dimension. As far as I can find out, they're now in the lower sixth dimension. Being born into the Earth density, I lost the memory of who I was and was caught up in karma and all the rest of it. Well, it might be tough here on Earth, but it is an excellent place to learn about duality and separation from the divine. I have seen myself in many lives. I was here when Jesus walked, but in contradiction to many who see that they were one of his followers, or of the Essene order, I was a Roman soldier, a coarse type, with eight sons and a wife I ignored. I heard about Jesus after his death, but was not interested in his teachings. Wow, I had really dug myself into duality. At least I'm going in the right direction, thank God. It looks like I've been on Earth longer than most young star people living today. My daughter is one of the very new ones. I believe that at least 90% of the wanderers are born into new human bodies, and walk-ins are seldom. I keep wondering why it took me so long to wake up. I was 49 before I woke up in a hurry, looking back at my life, trying to see indications in behavior that would point to me being a wanderer, I found many signs. I was always the idealist who stood up for what I believed in and got the worst for it. I always stood up for the weak whether humans or animals, which was done with great vigor and disgust at such an unjust world. My family laughed at me for my efforts. I was a compassionate anti-racist ever since I was a child, and back then we hardly had any other races in Norway. I was a bit ashamed of being white and thought the white man was arrogant, with poor ability to put himself in the position of someone of another color. Well, of course, I found myself with a black man and gave birth to a beautiful daughter. When I was 49, I started to read about spiritual matters. I read everything I could get my hands on and found that nothing surprised me. In 1993, I opened up while doing automatic writing, and after a year's time, I practiced telepathy. I was in contact with the spiritual world while learning to grow as a person. After a while, I came in contact with my brothers and sisters from Alpha Centauri. I had many doubts, and it was a difficult process, but after about two years I got a spiritual initiation and was told that I was now a member of the Council for Earth's Evolution, which I attend while sleeping, together with, I think, millions of other people. One morning, in March 1995, I woke up and could feel the presence of several energies in my bedroom. They told me they would help me, or heal me, with energy. They came daily for almost four months, and each time they would work on me for one to two hours. They communicated with me every step of the way and told me what they were doing and why. It was a profound experience. All was done with my consent, and when they left, they would send me love energies, and I cannot explain how wonderful that was. A Trail of Clues, the Midwest
One of my first memories stems from when I was about three years old. I was asleep in my second floor bedroom when I suddenly awakened just before dawn. I ran over to the window, opened it, and climbed out onto the overhanging roof. My parents would have flipped if they had seen me do this. Just in time to see a flash of light streak through the sky. To this day, I still marvel at how I knew it was there. Still on the subject of my childhood, I remember taking the set of chairs from our kitchen and turning them upside down on the floor so the chrome bars which usually sat on the floor were pointing towards the ceiling and sitting on the backrest of one of them, holding onto the floor rest, pretending to fly my spaceship. I used to look at my parents from time to time and at other people too and wonder who are these people anyway. And, with the experiences I have described above, and more, no doubt they probably wondered who I was, too. I had strange dreams since my childhood. I saw myself dressed in a white robe, carrying a golden key in my pocket. I saw myself carrying a huge book with the cover of gold and white. I saw myself in classrooms, and some of the teachers have not appeared to be human. I knew that somewhere I had another home, with another family, and that I have a brother, although in this life I'm an only child. I felt alienated from the things that children and teenagers were doing around me, and I often felt that I wanted to go home, wherever that home was. Once I grew up, however, I made an honest attempt at fitting in. I was married, had three children, worked jobs, got divorced. I was a single mom for eight years prior to meeting and marrying the husband who just passed away. Even the circumstances of our meeting were strange. In 1989... I was still a single mother working as a nurse in a hospital. I walked to the bus stop early each morning to get to work. On one morning, I was on my way to the bus stop when I noticed what seemed to be an extra light over one of the stores near where I caught the bus. Part of me said, the manager must have put up a spotlight, while another part of me said, that's no spotlight and you know it. As I crossed the parking lot in front of the stores, going to where the bus stopped, I watched as a smoky mist began to surround this light. When the mist cleared, the light had disappeared, and all I could see was the outline of five rings in the sky. Suddenly, they turned bright red and sped off. I was left feeling, hey, wait, you forgot me. There were usually at least half a dozen other people who waited for the bus each morning, but on that morning, no one was there. There was no one else who I could have grabbed and asked, did you see that too? As I thought about it, I had been dreaming about UFOs for about two weeks before this incident. I hadn't thought too much about it, because I was not, and am not now, a UFO buff. About three months later, I met my husband, and by the end of the year, we relocated to the town where I live today. We became very active in metaphysical groups, some of which were good, some not. But then again, you have to kiss a lot of frogs before you find the prince. Which brings me to another memory. In the spring of 1990... My husband and I bought a used car from someone we had met in one of those metaphysical groups. When I visited the woman who sold the car, she showed me a flyer for an event called the Pleiadian Activation, to be held six months later. Though I promptly forgot it, one morning, a week before the event, it popped into my mind. So I scraped together the money and went. At the activation, the facilitator worked with our energy, going from person to person in the circle. When it was my turn, when she finished with my energy, she hugged me and said, Welcome home, baby. You're not alone anymore. I love you. You're so beautiful. The next day, the facilitator held one more class and mentioned that she had just been as surprised at the message that she channeled last night as much as I was, and she had no idea where the words came from or who said them. But it had been a message intended for me. Through the years, those words remained with me and have been key to my waking up again. I know now that I come from the Pleiadian system and have been on Earth for a long time. Longing and Belonging, Washington State I have recently purchased from elsewhere. I'm really not sure how to begin my letter or how to explain myself. Many of the things I would like to say would just seem like I'm taking someone else's explanations from your book. But ever since I was a child, I've known that Earth is not my true origin, I have always felt I didn't really belong here. I just resorted to the fact that I was stuck here and had to make the most of it. But I've always seemed to rebel to the point where I don't want to fit in too many times. I don't want to fit in often because I'm not on the same level or wavelength, so to speak. I've always been a loner for the most part, 
I do have a handful of friends who are basically on the same level of awareness, and mingling with others just seems to sap my energy. I don't know how else to explain this, and please understand I am not crazy or one of those wannabes. I grew up knowing things, even though my physical family have their own personal beliefs. I don't believe in death. Even as a child, I would refuse to attend a funeral. My family thought that it was because I was afraid. No, not at all. I have never believed in churches or any religion. Even though I was forced into attending the family church as a child, I simply hated it and refused to believe in what was taught. I do not believe that being buried in the ground is the proper way to discard a physical body or the shell of the physical body. Cremation, yes. When I was a child. I can never forget how I used to cry that I wanted to go home. As a child, I was shy and quiet. Yet I seemed to know so much. I didn't have a particularly happy childhood. I was always a very lonely child and related to animals more than people. Even now, I always have a deep bond with animals more than with people. I have had three miserable marriages, and at present, I am single, and I'm not looking. It always turns out that I'm never on the same level as spouses, and things just start to fall apart. I'm always growing faster than spouses. I have three daughters. One thinks I'm nuts. One accepts me as I am, and one tolerates me. All my life, fifty-six years now, I have felt different from my family. I never have fit in. I've always been considered the black sheep. I've never been interested in education. By this, I mean college and so on. I've always felt for myself that college education was not that important for me. I'm wise and intelligent to a point, not in the educational sense. I know things that I cannot explain how I know. I'm not psychic, really. I've never seen a UFO, nor have I ever been abducted that I know of. So I have never claimed this. I've had strange dreams all my life, some rather weird ones at that. I've tried to take training with computers so I could at least get a decent job. But I can't stand to be in the same room or area as computers. They just mess my aura up. I can't think straight, and I'm a mess after being around them. I'm very sensitive to places I go into. Also, many people are, so I'm not alone there. I don't identify with the Pleiadians, Ashtar Command, or Orion. My personal identity is with Sirius. Thoughts, feelings, and whatever else clicks with Sirius. It's a knowing of belonging. I love the planet Earth. But I resent being here because of what humankind is doing to this planet. My heart grieves and breaks over such carelessness and destruction. How many times have I gone to sleep in tears, wondering why I must be here to witness such appalling things? The Earth and animals are being crucified in the name of progress. I feel a deep bond with Earth and the animals, but at the same time, I deeply resent being here to witness this. I still stand out under the stars and wonder why the heck I am here. I don't seem to have a mission of any importance, and yet I feel that there is something I'm supposed to do. I wish I knew what. There is much from your book that I can identify with. Yet I am just someone simple. If you care to call me this, I really don't know how to classify myself. So here I am, seeking some answers, seeking myself, and it's been a very frustrating journey, to say the least. If I'm not one of those from elsewhere. Then why am I the way I am? If I am one, then why have I not found my niche in life like others have? Why am I still searching and wandering around like some lost soul? If I am not one, why do I identify so much with what I hear and read? It just doesn't make sense to me, and I'm not some crazy halfwit looking for attention. I really am not. Many times I just feel like I'm stuck between two worlds. One world is out there in the galaxy, and the other is here on planet Earth. Why am I here, California? I've known I was from some other place in the universe for as long as I can remember. As a young child, I recall feeling that I must have been adopted. I dreamed that somehow I was inadvertently misplaced, and that my real family was searching for me from some faraway spot. Perhaps I was lost in a time warp. I thought, and they didn't know where to look for me, or they had given up the search. I was different. Profoundly alone, living in a family of five on a planet covered with people, I wondered what was my purpose and how would I find it. When I was around three or four years old, I began receiving visits from a group of two-foot-tall androgynous beings. They entered my room through the window and sat cross-legged on the floor up against the wall. They never approached me or harmed me in any way. 
Sometimes a few would just look at me, and then they just sat and talked with me. I don't recall the subjects of the conversations, but I know that I felt completely at ease and that they were teaching me. Perhaps they gave me now forgotten clues to my Earth mission. I didn't see them again after my family moved to a new house when I was six years old, and my new room didn't have a window outside. Very soon thereafter, I became absolutely fascinated with stargazing and quickly learned many constellations and how to identify the planets. Actually, my interest in astronomy probably manifested much sooner, as my mother told me that my first word was not mommy or daddy, but moon. I joined the astronomy club at school and loved to go out in open fields at night, waiting to see meteors and UFOs. I don't remember seeing any UFOs, but I often prayed that one would come get me and whisk me home. My mother joined a meditation group when I was about ten. Within a couple of years, she realized that I was different and very mature for my age, and I was asked to join the group that met weekly for meditation and metaphysical theosophical study. I hoped meditation would unlock the secret to my destiny. At age thirteen, I was given a psychic reading in which I was told about four of my previous lives on Earth. The first one described my life as a teacher during the early days of Atlantis, and in the most recent one, I was a physician and researcher in the last century. The concept of reincarnation and these experiences, in particular, seem so familiar. The evolutionary path of learning and growth through numerous lifetimes made logical sense to me and felt right somehow. Over the next several years, I was taught how to meditate individually and with the group in various ways. Some members of the group regularly performed healings and engaged in channeling of information from entities from the other side of the veil. Teachings felt much more like remembering familiar truths than some new learning. I spent my twenties and early thirties as a workaholic, married to a workaholic, while continuing my education. I read some metaphysical material during this period, but for the most part, I did not regularly pursue real spiritual growth. My spouse did not understand all this strange stuff and was not terribly supportive of my continued study. As a result, I chose to keep myself busy elsewhere by working long hours and collecting degrees in environmental science and public policy. This hiatus was actually wonderful because I learned how to be more content living on planet Earth and how to work within the system. I received another spiritual wake-up call when I was 33. I began reading material regarding Earth, energy changes, and the new millennium. I felt a pull toward my metaphysical roots and began feeling a renewed sense of contact with my guides and those on the other side. Unfortunately, within a few months, I found myself in the midst of a divorce. After a brief dark period, I emerged to find that I was intact and better able to begin growing again. Ultimately, this experience was a fabulous catalyst. I've met so many friends that I wouldn't have been open to in the old mindset. I've rediscovered myself as a wanderer, not of Earth, but here to learn, teach, and help others. This seems to be a time to seek out other wanderers to form groups for support and amplify our efforts to assist humans in love during this time of tremendous change. I'm sure that the process of discovering my true self and recognizing it in others will bring me ever closer to the goal of meaningful service to others as they freely pursue their own paths of self-discovery.